yo, yo, what's going on, everybody? How's it hanging? How's it happening? You know who it is. It's Kevin from the Cord. The Cord Progression Podcast brought to you by My Song Day Rock 2000 today. Happy Tuesday to everybody. It's the first Tuesday of February in 2020. Wait, 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 wait. We're already in February? I mean, we just got into the new decade. We're already a month through. Like, what the hell happened? I mean, I'll, next thing you know, if everyone's like, oh, yeah, you know, happy new year. We're starting a new decade. Already a month through. What's going to happen next? I mean, anything could probably happen next. All of a sudden, it's going to be March, April, May, June. It's going to be 2021, 2022, 2023. Before you know it, I'm going to be married, have kids, and all of a sudden be like, ah, do I have time for this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that's going to happen. But glad to have you guys here for episode 54 of the Core Progression Podcast. Got enough, again, good amount of stuff to go with you guys today. Talk about, you know, spew my uh, ranting on. Did I just say spew my ranting? Spew some rants? Whatever the heck I'm trying to say. You guys know what I'm trying to go for. But before we get into anything, we're going to go with the sh- 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 shameless plugs. So, of course, you guys know the shameless plug section is where I, I would do all the advertising reads if I had them. But then again, that is if I had them. Yeah. Anywho, uh, we're just going to promote my song of day stuff. So follow us on all the social media platforms. So follow us on Facebook. Anytime I think it's released, podcast episodes, what the song of the day feature is in its 30-second preview and YouTube videos. Yeah, you're going to find that on Facebook, Twitter, all the same stuff as well. Plus, it's a well, you know the platform is basically built to talk with us. So... You come and talk to us. And then also follow us on Instagram as well. Instagram is our biggest platform right now. And we do a lot of different things on Instagram. So the 30-second song a day preview videos are posted on Instagram every single day. We will also post many different things on Instagram, such as every single Monday. It's like, uh, which is your favorite album from said band? You know, you tell us what the name of the album is. And then we ask you why. And then we just, you know, go from there. Uh, Tuesdays, we have our IGTV video. So every Tuesday, we release a new IGTV video, which is like a behind the scenes look at what's going on here at my Sunday Rock 2008, or just some of the crazy shit that I'm working on, which basically are the same thing. Every single Wednesday, we do our Instagram live stream. So every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Central Time, you can come join us for an hour and we can just have, you know, a bunch of fun talking about music. I remember last week's. Last week's was great because we got to talk to. Uh, live actually the drummer for $20 bill. So they're one of the small band Saturday features that we had back in January. And then one of our other friends as well, who came on and we got into some great stuff, which we'll go over, you know, here on the podcast. Cause we had a great idea going forward. Also, we will do other things in there as well. Like, you know, ask you one of my favorites is, all right, we're going to put two like bands together and we're going to ask you, which one do you think is better? And we get into some real interesting debates. So Instagram is a hopping platform. You can also follow us on TikTok as well. I'm not doing a very good job on TikTok. I will admit that. And I say that all the time. I know I got to change, uh, do some stuff, you know, to basically, you know, ramp it up. But honestly, I could use some help with this, guys. Uh, follow us or subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. So when all these album reviews are coming out now, you can watch the album review on YouTube as well, along with some of the other videos, such as uh, like Kevin's top 10, whatever, Kevin reacts, some band reviews, and of course, our year end awards are on there. So you can see kind of like where I got lambasted with some of this stuff. So it's always fun there. Um, links for everything I'm talking about are going to be in the description of the podcast. As you listen to the Core Progression podcast, you can also listen to us here on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and on our YouTube channel as well. With our YouTube channel, you can actually watch the video. So I know I'm trying to get more people on the podcast as well. It's something that I got to, you know, I'm working on over the previous weekend. So everybody's working for the weekend. Now I'm going back with my 80s jams. And then also, if you're not enabled to our Amazon, oh, man. You can enable that with on your device or because that's where you're going to hear the whole entire song of the day feature. This Again, the song of the day feature, this is where it all came from. So the whole entire premise of the project is to get more people into rock and metal music from you know the year 2000 days. So anything that's more relevant. So you're going to rediscover old bands from like the early 2000s, 2010s that you forgot about that you used to love. It's like, oh my God, I used to love these guys. I can't believe they came out with new stuff. Let's go listen to them. Discover new bands that you absolutely love like myself ever since starting the project. I mean... I, I've basically gone head over heels for Motionless and White and Ice Nine Kills ever since starting the project. There's other bands that are up there, but those two specifically. And then there's also our small band Saturday feature. So every single Saturday, a smaller band is going to be featured 
on there so you can get a taste of what's to come next in rock and metal because you never know by the end of the 2020s one of the bands that could have been on our small band saturday feature could be one of the biggest rock bands in the world you could be like oh my god i've been on you know par with them and basically like in the know with them ever since they first started because of my song day rock 2008 so hell yeah so links for all this stuff again description below but let's get into the meat and potatoes so shoot where the heck did my cursor go because i'm gonna need this i end up actually writing out a good amount of like talking points so i didn't like lose my shit on this one but the first thing i want to talk about is the new theory of a dead man or theory album i don't know what they're calling themselves it's either theory of a dead man or theory and their album is called say nothing it was released on january 31st 2020 now i am not doing an album review for this one on youtube I've got another thing for the YouTube video for this week. And the reason I'm not doing a YouTube review for this one is a couple of reasons. One, I really did not want to do a YouTube review for Theory or Theory of a Dead Man or again, whatever you're going to call them. Reason being is because I never really cared that much for the band. And I just didn't want to do a full on YouTube album review for them. Again, there's going to be bands where I'm going to have to do YouTube album reviews from. Like if I really don't care for them a whole lot or if I kind of have, you know, mixed feelings about them or if I don't think they're gonna put out a good album, like uh, a band that I have mixed feelings about, so I, I really don't like them. I don't care. I don't. I just don't care for them. It, but I'm, you know, I'm not gonna be like, oh, if I get go see my concert once, I'm going to. It will be Five Finger Death Punch, and their album review is gonna be coming at the end of February or early March because that's when their album is gonna be released. So I'm gonna end up doing it anyway, especially with their large following. And I do want to go see them in concert in May, mostly because Ice Nine Kills is like the opener for. That for I prevail, then Papa Roach, then uh, Five Finger Death Punch. I want to see Ice Night Kills again. You guys know that, but I just did not really care to do it, especially because February I'm doing Green Day's new album, I'm doing Hollywood Undead's new album, I'm doing Amity Afflictions, I'm doing The Word of Lives, and I'm doing Five Finger Death Punches. That's five album reviews. That's a lot of albums to review. And then you jump into March right afterwards. I'm still doing Silver Scene. I'm doing Code Orange. I'm doing In This Moment. There's probably gonna be another one or two that show up there. And then eight, I mean, it's just gonna be a whole thing with album reviews. You guys are gonna get used to it but then again i gotta get more time to do this stuff and i just didn't want to end up burning out by the time i got to the end because i did feel that way a little bit going into the end of like 2019 because there was a period of time between august and october where it was like every single week i was doing one or two album reviews because i remember it was like at the beginning of august i was doing i did skillet then volbeat then i even went over to europe and i did slipknots over in Europe, I came back and I did Kill Switch Engages and I took a week off and then I had two right at the end of August with Wage War and Tools Fear Inoculum. Then I did Sleeping with Sirens, then I did Corn. then I did As I Lay Dying and I can't remember what I did at the end of the month, I think I did Hell Yeah, oh yeah, I did Hell Yeah and Of Mice Man at the end of September, then October I did Issues, I did Lacuna Coil, I did Alter Bridge and I did Saint Sonia. And by the time I got to Saint Sonia's, I was burnt out and i really didn't want to do an album but i really want to do saint sony's because i really like adam gantier's stuff so wanted to do that there and i just didn't want to end up having that burnout happen again so i want to take the break and i didn't do anything with say nothing but i did listen to the album and i wanted to give it a shot so but not that full of a shot so we're going to talk about it here on the chord progression podcast so Looking into a preview of the album, and one thing I wanted to do was I wanted to, you know, do get a look at a little background information on it because their previous record from 2017, I believe they put out, it was not received well by many rock critics uh, in in the world of, you know, rock and metal. Especially you look at the YouTube reviews online from places like Rocked or from ARTV because those are pretty much like two guys that like I usually look at their stuff too because, again, not only that, but just to compare notes as well. I mean, I will always listen to the album first and get my full thoughts on it. And then I look at their stuff to kind of see like, oh, do we agree? Do we disagree? Especially because if we agree on something, I'll say it. And if we disagree on something, I'll say it. But I'm not going to lambast them for it. I mean, it's their opinion too. But I looked at, the, I listened to this album a couple times through and through. I think like two or three times two, through and through. And then I ended up going over to uh, Rocked, their YouTube page, because I want to see what they had to say mostly because I know I'm very interested to see what the guy had to say about this album. And he put in a little bit more of a like background on that I could actually find. So the album that uh, Tyler Connolly, the front man of Theory of a Dead Man, he said this is going to be advertised and they're advertising it as the scariest album the band has ever done. And ends up tackling the catharsis that he of it, him in the world and how the band views current events. And I actually looked through like, you know, kind of some of this stuff. So there's a good number of like they deal with like domestic violence issues, uh, race, mass shootings, 
uh, serial killer, like kind of like a lot of different, and then like some economic inequality issues. They deal with a lot of that in this album. That's what they really try and go for. So I was interested to see what they said. And I think if you go over and watch the Rocked review on this one, I think you're actually going to get a very good take. It kind of like, I agree with him on a lot of these things. So if you think, you know, you want like a little bit more of a composite review, you can go over there and see what he says. Cause he kind of does a little bit of a song by song breakdown. I'm not doing that on this time because I didn't really go fully into it, but let me go into like what I really thought of the album now. So Fear Dead Man, of course, said this is the scariest album that the band has ever done. And at that point, after listening to it, like one time through, two times through, I said, this is going to be an absolute no. This is not the scariest album. This is not even that scary of an album. I think a better description for Say Nothing by Fear of a Dead Man, it is the most triggering album or trigger worthy album that the band has ever done. Now, again, again, like I said, they're talking about a lot of different things because they're focusing on so many socioeconomic, psychological, and political issues that are pressing today that the band sees that are pressing today. And I totally understand why they're going to say it's scary because there are people that really don't want to have to listen to stuff or face this stuff or deal with it. And when I looked at it, I thought, um, yeah, I get where you can see it's scary, but the, the way you go about it, the way that Theory of a Dead Man went about it, it was going to be causing more people to get triggered by their emotions and have a triggering response to them and kind of just play off of that to kind of, kind of get maybe some of those like little scares in there to where someone who doesn't really get that way with a lot of these issues, I looked, I thought this was definitely, you know, built to be more trigger worthy versus actual scary. And I think their song white boy is the perfect example of this. So the song ends up starting out with these news clips from, I think whenever that happened, it was 2016 or 2017 in Charleston, South Carolina, when, uh, uh, Dylan roof ended up shooting up that church in a mass shooting. And I think that they sentenced him to death and he's appealing it right now. I think I looked that up. I'm not a hundred percent sure. So don't quote me on that. But when they start out by playing those news clips, I'm talking about, you know, like the local news coverage or the CNN coverage of it. I think that this was intentionally done to get people triggered and to get their emotional response about both race, because again, it was Dylan Roof, white male shooting up a predominantly black church and also mass shooting as well, because again, you're dealing with shootings as well. And that's, those are two uh, very political issues right now that are very heavy within America. And not only that, but mostly, you know, in the, I'd say most of the Western world today are very focused on those, especially race, but especially in America with mass shootings. And this ups the profile of the song in the public overall, because if you're going to listen to this song and you are, you know, get very emotional about those issues, then yeah, when you hear those news clips being played in the first like 20, 24 seconds of the song, you're gonna end up, you know, getting that sort of feel. And I have seen bands do that before where they kind of put like some like news clips in a certain song. And I really do sometimes think, you know, it can work or kind of have like, you know, because I think, um, I'm trying to think of who did it that I really liked. I mean, I, an example of like one I thought was okay part of it was like uh, Rise from Skillet from like 2013 because at the end of it, they do some things with it. But it's, I think it's actually mostly the band that's doing it. So it's not like taking like a very straight news clip. But there are some that do it, some that don't. And again, this one, I did not think it worked out overall. And I'm not a fan of the song. I'm not even going to talk about it anymore like with that. I'm talking about the song now. So when it comes to the song, like how it's constructed, I mean, I'm not a fan because the sound of the song is entirely disingenuous in overall the reasoning behind it is because the song the sound of the song is both like this soft rock mix and a mix that overproduced pop rock sound and if you're thinking overproduced pop rock sound just just think imagine dragons that is the best way to describe that like overproduced pop rock sound where this really gives a song the sound like you know this wasn't necessarily written by theory of a dead man at all it might have been i don't know but it sounds like that this really had a lot of executive like musical producers that were really had their hands in a lot of this sound. And I think it's, the other reason why I really don't like that song is because of how it sounds. I mean, it's, it's a lot softer too to kind of just, again, evoke that triggering response. So it's a lot more drawn back. So it hits you harder in the emotions. Now say if they kind of had that same, like they use like the same style they did on something like, um, like their song savages from like 2013, 2014 on there. I mean, I would have looked at them like, you know, they kind of went hard on some of it. So I would have been interested in it more. And it, but maybe it wouldn't have had that, you know, necessarily like that triggering sound. And the vocals from Tyler on this one, 
I think they're just downright bad overall. I don't feel any emotion within the song at all through them. And I mean, it just, it, it just sounds like, again, this was written as part of like something to maybe just up their profile. Politically. I don't really know. And don't get me wrong. There are bands that do tackle these issues and I th- and make songs that have much more emotion intensity behind them and sound much more genuine and real. And I think a good example of for both sides and uh, I would say I'm going to use a recent examples too. So I'm not going to go way, way back and be like, okay, you know, you're talking, you know, when the times weren't really around there. So I'm going to talk recent examples. So I'm talking, let's go with that mass shootings kind of tactic. I'm going to go last year with the disguise album for most of white weather song thoughts and prayers, which was one of my favorite songs from the year. I think I had it number nine or number eight. And that song just had that like raw tenacity that most of white always had back, you know, especially on the creatures album. And I just love that. I, I don't, want this i don't need this i don't give a single fuck about your thoughts and prayers so and the reason why i love like really love why where the song took it was because with thoughts and prayers every time you see something like you know like a mass shooting happen especially on facebook especially all over social media twitter instagram you always see people saying like sending my thoughts and prayers sending my thoughts and prayers and the band is basically saying like fuck your thoughts and prayers we demand action like we need to get this shit like taken care of however you know we need to make sure this shit gets taken care of and taken care of correctly now however that may be who knows but I just love the fact that they took that with a whole nother tenacity and went straight at it and kept that just raw sound to it for something like this softer, more like soft rock overproduced rock mix or pop rock mix that theory of a dead man went with. And then I'm going to use the race motif as well. I mean, I'm going to bring up a song that came out, you know, on an album this year already. So back in, you know, in the middle of January, 2020. So two weeks before this album was when anti-flag released their 2020 vision, the song Christian nationalist, which was one of their lead singles. So the song came out back, you know, it, it was, you know, came back out in 2019, but it really tackles all of that. And I think there's a much better example of it because they have much more of that, you know, it has much more of a punk rock emotion to it. But I think again, that's what anti flag does. And they really hit well on it. I didn't really care for Christian nationalist as a song overall in comparison, mind you in comparison to many other songs on 2020 vision, but that's just the way that that was taking a look at another song that shows this like triggering motif as well. Instead of being more scary is the song Ted Bundy that theory of a dead man goes with. And the reason why I didn't like something because they use Ted Bundy on this one. They use that name and I believe they really use it just due to how he's seen in uh, culture today. And what I mean by that is serial killers and kind of like, you know, like those like true crime stories. They're very popular within culture today. So you're seeing a lot of TV shows that are dealing with more of those crime centered shows or though, you know, like what law and order SVU would really go after. So something like that, you know, those like rather heinous crimes. And then you take a look at Netflix documentaries. I think Netflix documentaries are perfect. You know, back, you know, five, six years ago when they had making a murder with Stephen Avery and they had the whole entire thing with that. I mean, that really took a lot of people by storm. I'm not sure with the rest of the country, but again, because that happened up in Manitowoc, Wisconsin, I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Manitowoc's about maybe like an hour and a half north, I want to say, like, like right, right, if you go up in I-43, I mean, it, like, it was really popular here in the state of Wisconsin, because again, you're dealing with some Wisconsin, and to give Ted Bundy something else as well, is because you take a look at what happened back, you know, Netflix did a whole entire movie about Ted Bundy and the whole entire trial with Ted Bundy, and it starred Zac Efron, so there is definitely a huge thing in pop culture to really get you know in this mass murder like the serial killer mass murder killing of women and again just with how popular it is in culture right now and how prevalent it is i think again not necessarily scary but much more triggering overall because people are immersed in it so they're gonna end up getting those emotions and lyrically and instrumentation wise god this is just not good at all i gotta start with the drumming on this one for its instrumentation problems given the fact that the drumming overall you guys know me i love the drums on a lot of these tracks i remember oh god what like uh shoot what album was it that i was talking about when i went through that like uh cello by apocalyptica again it's all instrumental but the drumming drove so much of it it was fantastic i couldn't get enough of it even anti-flag had some of that as well where the drumming really took a hold of it but the drumming has little to no change throughout the whole entire song i mean it's very consistent it's very just it's just 
basically like, you know, like a, like a war drum, just kind of keeping the march. It really gave me a headache as I was listening. I'm like, I don't want to listen to this. It's just, it's, it's simple for the sake of, it's not, it's not simple for the sake of simplicity being better. I think it was just simple just for the fact of, I don't know what really doing here on this one. And the lyrics are just, honestly, it's like, wait, what? I mean, it's the chorus starts out with, baby, you know that I love you to death, but I'm never going to see you again. It's like, well, uh, oh, okay, so now you're really going into the killer thing. It, it just it just didn't seem like that good of a song. And it was really just, uh, I, I knew it was definitely using that serial killer and the true crime thing to really bring out a lot of emotions in people and to really get a, people attracted to it. But I just really don't see it, guys. I mean, it just didn't sit well with me. Now, the last song on the album is another one I have a huge problem with. It's called It's All Good. And it it's I lo- I like I kind of like the idea that they had here, but the way that it ended up coming out at the end and just kind of the final product of it was just ugh. So the album, again, like I said earlier, it was taking this whole entire time focusing on these socioeconomic, political, psychological issues that the band has seen in the world today, but, and like kind of going off on like the catharsis that, uh, what, what was his name again? Tyler Connolly has the lead singer for theory of a dead man, uh, towards all this stuff and towards certain things in life. And it just like, I thought about, I'm like, wait a minute, you're going over all this stuff and you're kind of just saying, oh, but it's all good. It's all good. If, if you really feel that way, I don't think you're going to be coming out with a song that's like, it's all good. Even if it's in an ironic sense, it, it had this like country music meets like a clear, a uh, Creedence Clearwater revival intro. And overall, it just didn't, really, didn't make any sense to me. And, you know, saying, oh, it's all good, baby. Like, really, what are you going for? Because you spent that whole entire time talking about what you see wrong in the world. And then you discount it completely by saying, oh, it's all good. No big deal. Again, like I said, like earlier, like maybe this is like done in an ironic sense. But even that ironic sense of the word, again, it just ruins anything the album had going, if it had anything going. Now, you guys know, especially when I do album reviews, if they're negative, I and especially like take a look at the uh, and your and your eye. Yeah, now I'm starting to speak weird. Year end awards from 2019 when I did like the worst albums of the year. Taking a look at you know okay I'm always trying to look for the silver lining album because again people are gonna hear this music differently than my than myself. They might have a different opinion on me. So let's take a look at the silver lining album. Like is there anything good or any redeeming quality on this album? And potentially two things. One where it's like the attempt, and two is the end product. So the thing that I liked about this album like where i thought anything good on it was their attempt to really try something a little different and what i mean by that is like fear of a dead man went much with like a much softer overall sound to their instrumentation and melodies versus something like again you listen to something like you know like back in the early 2000 to like 2009 2010 with uh, bad girlfriend or the savages song that featured alice cooper back from like 2013 2014 like those go those go harder but this one like the whole entire song structure every single song is it was so much softer had like kind of like a more like country vibe to it and while i do like the change of like that impactful sound now that you know trying to be something more humble and soft especially giving you know the what you're kind of talking about i like the idea but i do think they missed the mark completely on this one because when you listen to the album the softness does sound like the, the that like catharsis of it all you know it like just took over the band so I like the idea, but then it ends up just sounding like jaded overall. Like they just don't really care. Again, nice attempt, but the jadedness, especially within the vocals, just ruins this one completely. I will have to give the band a rather large upvote on their song History of Violence on this one. It is the Diamond the Rough song in this whole entire album, and I, I will talk about it because it is something uh, something that I actually thought like, okay, they have something here. So they still have, again, some of that, like, twangy country mix, that soft rock vibe overall. So it's very it's very consistent to the similar structure throughout the whole entire album. But there's just a little bit more conscious between how the instrumentation, the verse, and the chorus sound. So there is something there. And the verses have more of that, like, you know, twangy country sound as the chorus takes over, a little bit more of that rock emotion intensity. It's not much, but it is noticeable. And Tyler's vocals being overall more jaded in tone actually do work well on this song given the base of the song especially if you watch the music video because the song is all based off of the the premise of domestic violence and if you watch the music video it's a woman in a relationship that is suffering from domestic violence and refuses to stand up for herself like kind of like being like jaded overall in life because she feels she has no self-worth 
And I will go into the comment section on that video in a little bit so you kind of see how people react to this one. Because the song, I do think, reflects with that jadedness and the vocals from Tyler and that more country sound from the band. So it's more down home. It's more impactful. It's more... Uh, Kind of like I'm gonna think I'm gonna say down home is probably the best way to describe it, and the jadedness of the vocals really portray what I think you know a lot of people. What I've seen a lot of people say like they feel like when they're in those domestic violence, like they just can't get out, like they just kind of just don't really have a will to fight in the end. And the song continues to show how this woman ends up killing her boyfriend, husband, partner, and whoever, and ends up going to prison. And as she's going to prison, she still has that jaded feel overall to it. And it continues to really just kind of like fit the whole entire uh, song. And especially watching music, it really works well. Now, the bridge shows more emotion and more intensity as the vocals and the sound of the instrumentation get a little bit more raw and contains more emotion. And during that point in the video, the video shows a woman more fi find herself in prison, finally becoming like I'd say herself again, finally becoming that feeling like she has some worth. And the bridge helps me, helps this, not me, but it really helps amplify this overall. So before I jump into something else, overall, this album is just a poor outing from Theory or Theory of a Dead Man, as the album is supposed to be scary, but it ends up just being trigger worthy and incredibly just bland and jaded. Now, I do have a chance to go see them live here in Milwaukee at the beginning of May with the band 10 years opening for them, and I'm going to pass on that one. Reason being is because last time I saw 10, uh, the first time I saw 10 years, they opened for Chevelle. They were okay. Second time I saw 10 years, they headlined. And they had Tremonti opening for him. And Tremonti just m took him out. I mean, 10 years didn't seem like they wanted to be there. And I don't want to hear a lot of these songs from Theory of Demi because they just, they just don't really... It's not going to be something that concert I want to go to. The Silver Lining is the History of Violence song as the band really hits with the correct mixture of being jaded and finally find yourself after being a victim of domestic violence. And this can easily be seen in the comments on YouTube. So... If you out there are listening to this and if you have been a victim of domestic violence or if you're going through something like that, take a look at the song and take a look at the comment section. And so the top comment on this one, I will actually read it for you guys. It says, this is the first time I've heard this song and I honestly cry. This fact is from three months ago. I'm a survivor of domestic violence. It says that her ex tried to kill her when she was pregnant. And the day she wrote this is the anniversary of that. She did, however, fight back, giving him a stab wound. Court deemed it to be self-defense. And he spent the rest of his life behind bars. And although I'm getting better and stronger every day, I still have the memories and my beautiful daughter. So you're, see, uh, you're seeing, I'm going to see if I can see some of the replies. Good for you, princess. Your daughter's so lucky to have such a badass mother. Sorry, her sperm donor such a piece of shit. Stay strong. Uh, one at a time, I prayed that you can heal. Uh, there's another one. Geez, okay, domestic violence is one thing, but while you're pregnant, that's uh, yeah, that's another level of yikes. Glad to hear nothing bad happened to you, your unborn baby. Uh, take a look at some of the other actual comments, not the replies. So this is going to be a new comment. This is powerful. The argument for prison coming across as her true freedom from domestic violence is astounding, and I actually really agree with that, um, especially within the video. I mean, that's not going to be everybody's... Uh, uh, experience overall, especially with something like this, but taking a look at the video, I mean, I think they really did a good job on that. Uh, let's see. I'm not, that don't, uh, to be honest, I actually don't care that it's not like their older stuff. I appreciate what others are saying, but the message in this song is so much more important. Men, women, children suffer daily through domestic violence. And in 2019, because the song did come out in 2019, it's not talked about enough to help people escape the right way. Um, let's see what else. Never been abused, never witnessed abuse in my hometown, but the visuals of abuse make me burn under my collar. Uh, let's see. Uh, here's another one. Back in the early 80s when I was a young boy, I always wondered if the things that went on in my home at night went on in any schoolmates' homes as well. I also remember thinking that it must be just in our home since nobody talks about it, right? It's good that we are talking about these things today before the violence escalates to the point of no return. Rock on. Um, let's see if there's any other couple that I want to. Uh, someone wrote, my last serious girlfriend who I was totally 100% in love with where I wouldn't even look at another woman turned out to be so violent. Started verbally, but escalated to stabbing me. So I left before she killed me. She was so beautiful, and I'll never stop lo loving her and praying for her. Uh, last one to go with is this guy's or this person's might not be a guy. 
Well, I've heard this song on the radio and felt an attachment to the chorus. This is the first time looking it up, let alone the actual music video. And I'm literally sitting here in tears in the middle of my desk job and working shortly after. Uh, like, wow, I've been in that situation, had all those exact experiences, even gave the exact face in the car afterwards. That hit me harder than I thought it would. So in the end, like, take a look at the comments on this one. Uh, it's definitely showing, like, that message is definitely really resonating well. I think one thing that really helps the song out again is that music video because it really just puts it all into perspective. But now when a lot of people hear it, hopefully people that are going through that domestic violence has helped give them the strength to leave and get out of it because no one should have to go through that. And... I think that if there's a silver lining on Say Nothing by Theory of a Dead Man, it is this song. All right. I think you guys have had enough about Theory of a Dead Man. Now, talk about another uh, artist that I want to go into, and it's Clint Lowry. Uh, he's the lead guitarist and the backing vocalist for Seven Dust. And I keep seeing a lot of things online where people are really starting to talk about his God Bless the Renegades review. I think Alter Bridge really started to talk about it. And I thought, of course, Alter Bridge talked about it because... Uh, Clint Lowry is going on tour with them, and I'm going to be seeing him in uh, a little under two weeks. So I kind of looked at him like, okay, you're the lead guitarist and the backing vocal of Seven Dust. You're basically kind of like, and you're doing your own side project. This is basically like the same position that Mark Tremonti holds for Alter Bridge because, again, co-songwriter, lead guitarist for Alter Bridge, and he has his own side project, Tremonti, and I, I really like both projects. And I saw it again, receiving the hype, and I wanted to go check it out before I look, looked at it. And I listened to the song, and... God bless the race. When I think of rock music, if there's a current band that exemplifies rock music, like if like, you know, basically it's like, you know, not like any subgenre, not like soft rock, hard rock, punk rock, just straight up rock music. I mean, it's going to be Alter Bridge. And the reason I think that is just because they just have that consistent sound. It's just fantastic. But if there's one for hard rock, though, if you want to just go like, you know, like someone's like, OK, what does hard rock sound like? Like, if someone's asked me what does rock, rock sound like, I'm going to show them an Alter Bridge song. But if someone says, like, okay, say, what does hard rock sound like, I'm showing them God Bless the Renegades by Clint Lowry. The reason it's because his vocals are not nearly as pretty as someone like Miles Kennedy's. They're rougher, but they have this absolute classic hard rock sound to them overall. And I was like, yeah, I'm liking this. This is good stuff. And I, I just don't know really how to exactly describe it, but when I'm, like, thinking, like, of a hard rock focus from, like, late 2000s, early 2000s, I mean, this is the epitome of it. It's not perfect. But then again, you take a look at a lot of, music, rock, a lot of like, rock musicians. Their vocals aren't perfect. I mean, Miles Kennedy is a sheer, you know, uh, what's the best way to put it? Like, uh, if, say, you know, I'm going to use American Idol or, like, The Voice as an example. There's so many great, vocalists in rock and metal that if they went on those shows they would just get lambasted and just kicked out right away i mean there's a lot of those like pop artists where yeah it's like they go on there they have a success they have somewhat of a successful career sometimes sometimes they don't sometimes they do it's in their very successful careers but there's a lot of them where it's like yeah you're it's yeah your my your voice is a lot better than say someone like john cooper's of skillet but i mean that that doesn't it doesn't mean you know you take take a look at like the vocals and mix it with the instrumentation and see how that all plays out pop artists it's very just kind of i think it's actually much more cut and dry where it's like okay you have to have a good voice and we're gonna build around that and then with rock bands like we're gonna it's like we're gonna build them both together vocals instrumentation we're gonna put it all together and make sure it sounds right so that's why i like you know what like that more like gruffy like harder gruffier you know, Christian rock that skillet does. I think John Cooper's voice is actually really good for it. Um, take a look at like, you know, punk rock as well. I mean, I would say this just insane ain't winning any vocal competitions for anti flag, but it, that just that angsty sound to his vocals, it fits for punk rock and it fits for anti flag. So it works out beautifully. And, but when it comes to Clint Lowry's look, like if there was like a hard rock one, Oh my God, this is perfect for it. Like, if there was, like, a hard rock, The Voice, or basically, like, you know what I'm saying, like, The Voice of Germany, yeah, this would definitely be on that one. Trust me on that one. Oh, my Lord. And the instrumentation just follows completely suit, follows suit as well. It kind of is like a harder, it has much of a hard rock vibe. Not necessarily, like, you know, maybe, like, if, like, a Metalingus vibe by Alter Bridge. Again, I'm putting the two together just because, again, they're going on tour. They keep talking about each other, and I think it really works out well. And it doesn't venture into metal really that much at all because, again, it's going to stay that consistent hard rock sound throughout the whole entire thing. Whereas it, with uh, Clint Lowry as the lead guitarist and backing vocalist for Seven Dust, yeah, Seven Dust is going to be have much more of that, you know, like metal vibes and like that hard rock, heavy metal vibe to him. And I've seen Seven Dust in concert before. I saw him open up for In This Moment and 
let me tell you, Seven Dust, worth it. They should have been the headliner because Seven Dust was awesome. I really want to go see him again because they just rocked the freaking stage. But you take a look at the video for uh, God Bless Earning Games. It's basically depicts kids staying around LA and being their own people. And I think the song epitomizes if, say, those kids that have been or were skating around, you know, like 17, 18 years old, would be like 10 years older, but they never lost that renegade mentality. This is the type of song that makes it. And I got excited listening to this song. It makes me excited to go see Clint Lowry open up for Alter Bridge. I can't wait. I can't wait. Now, I know earlier I was talking about uh, our Instagram live stream and how we had some fun idea. And now I got to talk about it now because brought on one of our friends who... Uh, decided hey can i go live with you and i'm like yeah because every time i go live with this guy it just goes nuts like we always have a great time talking about a lot of music and we end up kind of talking about riot fest which i'll get into a little bit don't worry about that because i got a whole entire spiel for that but i had something for we were talking about it with um you know my chemical romance again again that a little bit later but then we're talking about how last year like i got to go i got to see rise against got to see slayer but i didn't go on the sunday and they had the village people on Sunday. Uh, why is that? I mean, noteworthy, Kevin. Let me tell you guys. The fans of Riot Fest and the patrons of Riot Fest did a wall of freaking death during YMCA. Yeah, we went, they went nuts and did like a, you know, whole entire thing. Like all of a sudden <laughs> you're seeing like, it's fun to stay at the wall. <laughs> like just and nuts if you go go to loudware go to youtube i know they have the video up there somewhere and we were talking about it. it's like you know that's hilarious because these metal fans and these punk fans they were able to get into just like this disco music and just create something insane about it and then we were talking about you know could you imagine like if these bands would be re, would remake disco tracks but in their genres so we were like oh basically like you know pop goes punk but instead pop goes disco and for the next like 20 minutes of the live stream, we were just pulling out songs. That's like, okay, here are some disco songs. Let's see. Who do you guys think would be the best to do? Them? And I remember like someone said, uh, you know, like uh, staying alive by the Bee Gees, you know, ah, 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 staying alive, staying alive. It's like, okay, who could pull off something like that in their own style? And, like really have the vocals to do it. And someone just said, boom, sleeping with sirens. And I looked, at, I said, it could be Sleeping With Sirens because, you know, you got Kellen Quinn who could really hit those vocals or Pierce the Veil because Vic Fuentes could do the same thing as well. And I thought, nah, let's have one or the other do. Let's have Sleeping With Sirens do it or Pierce the Veil do it. But whoever does it, the other band's vocalist has to be a guest feature. So basically, like, have, like, a king for a day situation. I'm like, oh, man, this is like Punk Goes Disco. And there are many more bands that you could pull up and be like, you know, do the YMCA. I thought we found it funny to be like if Motionless and White did that, just have Chris Motionless just yelling, bleh, on the track. I thought it'd be fun. I thought Ice Nine Kills would be a fun one as well. The Amity Affliction. We came as Romans. The Devil Wears Prada. There are bands that could really pull this off. Macho Man. Could you imagine As I Lay Dying doing Macho Man? Or Beartooth or A Day to Remember? I mean, just kind of the thought of it was and it, the overall thought of it was there are so many different possibilities that can happen with this. And we've seen that disco music and rock music fans and metal fans actually works out if you do it right i mean sure it might have been i they're trying like doing like the you know wall of death for the ymc as an ironic thing but again there's so many of those like pop goes punk or punk goes pop tracks and i just thought it was fun as all hell because you take a look at like some of those tracks i absolutely love ice nine kills his cover of animals because that like i don't like maroon 5's version of it all it just doesn't really it doesn't sound right but all of a sudden i heard ice nine kills do it i watched the video from like yeah <laughs> now that's what i'm talking about i love it i gotta get me a drink of water oh gatorade i should say Man, me talking about this stuff, you know, sometimes I think that throat's a little scratchy. But keep going on about that. And there's some other ones who like uh, a day to remember with the Since You've Been Gone cover. Like they took a whole thing with that and they had a great time. If it wasn't for the Pop Goes Punk cover, I Prevail would not be the band they are today without them covering Blank Space expertly. Like they, they did it fantastic. I can't, like, you couldn't get enough of it. And I just thought, what happens if, you know, you did something like that, but with disco? We had so many ideas on there, so many possibilities. It, I wish I had a way to say that live stream because we were laughing hysterically throughout the whole entire thing, but it was all because we realized something was, this could be something that is potentially gigantic, huge, whatever you want to say about it, because 
it's something that, you know, it could be ours. I will end up sending a message to Fearless Records before this podcast comes out saying, hey, have you guys ever thought about it? And maybe try and push for it because then all of a sudden, what happens if they do it? You know, we came up with the idea. I'll have all the, you know, messages for it. So you can kind of tell, yeah, I can't came up with the idea. Well, actually, it was our fans that came up with the idea. We just took it another, we just took it full force with it. I, I mean, we all came up, I'll put it this way. It was something where it was, whoever's on that live stream, we all came up with it together. Because it started with, I forgot who started the idea, but then all this, it might have been like, might have been the guy that we were working with or talking to directly. But then all the comments that were coming through, it's like a bear tooth or a day to remember or as I lay down or sleeping with sirens or mostly or ice nine kills, like doing all this stuff. Now I'm like, let's go, let's go. Like, this would be awesome. So I will be in contact with Fearless Records about it because I just want to see what they have to say. I think it'd be fr- freaking hilarious and fun as all hell and actually worthwhile because. Then again, you get people like, oh, my God, I want to listen to, like, the cover of YMC. W- Wait, wh- who's doing it? This doesn't sound like it, but I like it kind of thing. You know, basically what we're going off on that one. Now, I got to talk about uh, My Chemical Romance, guys. I have to. Just talking about Riot Fest. So, My Chemical Romance are coming back to the United States to tour. Yeah, they're going to be doing, like, a one-month tour in the U.S. starting in September 2020 and in October 2020. And... Guys, like the excitement around this one was absolutely bonkers because they put out a cryptic video like the day beforehand. I think it was on Tuesday, the, but like the day of the podcast. I'm like, okay, let's see what's going on here. Then all of a sudden, Wednesday drops in. It's like, oh my God, they're coming back. And I'm like, okay, I got to make sure that I get to go see MCR. So I'm like, okay, where are the dates? I told myself, there is no way in hell they're going to be playing in Milwaukee. So there's two chances I'm going to be able to get to go see them because of all the stuff I'm doing in September anyway. If they're going to be in Minneapolis or St. Paul or the Twin Cities somewhere around that time, or if they show up in Chicago somewhere around the time that actually works. And I saw they announced the Minneapolis show for September. I'm like, that's awesome. It's a Friday. I can make that work. But what about Chicago? And I just had a huge smile on my face because they're playing in Chicago on a Saturday night. They're pl- they're headlining Riot Fest on Saturday night. I was at Riot Fest last year and I was just like, oh my God, I really want to go there. But then one thing I looked at, I'm like, okay, let's take a look at what people are talking about with Riot Fest. And on the Facebook group for Riot Fest, and when they posted it, I just like, oh, man, there was a lot of mixed reactions. Um, someone said, wow, so disappointed. What a shitty band. Who's next? Hawthorne Heights? Of course, now Riot Fest actually, you know, decided to respond to something saying, okay, Boomer, which I liked. Uh, let's see some of these else. Um, send them back. We don't want them. Put back on the hardcore punk bands again thanks sorry they're the only band we have booked this year keep whining i guess <laughs> so i love ride fest on this one um let's see what else we got here Cause there's some uh i sincerely hope this doesn't mean rage against machine is playing lala um i don't know that but they're playing lala palooza they already or not lala they already said they're playing uh coachella not lala uh let's see uh, let's see. Need to rearrange your stages. Right. Fest main stage setup is awful. I actually didn't mind it last year, dude, because whoever said that, because, uh, well, they sta- like the main stage and the, like the second, like the, not like the stage that just was like the next stage. That wasn't the main stage. That was right next to the main stage. That's a rising. So, so I got to see rising against Slayer. So yeah. Um, Oh, uh, really? Okay. I just guys to put on a great fest, but the first announcement sure makes me feel like right. Fest is now skewing younger than their original demographic here. And I love the comment by someone in here. This is not Riot Fest comment. There's someone else saying, people who like MCR back in the day are now in their late 20s, early 30s now. Riot Fest has always been particularly about nostalgia. And yeah, it wasn't that long ago, but a lot of fans aren't still 12, which does make a lot of sense. Uh, let's see what else we got here. <laughs> My fa- Oh, the SpongeBob chicken one. But what about the band that I want to see? Um, LOL, all the crust punks in the comments who are pissed about MCR. These tickets will have no problem selling out. That I believe is true. Um, when are you announcing Huey Lewis in the news? <laughs> That's funny. Um, let's see what else we got. Now show the good bands. Uh, really this band is definition of whiny, terrible music. Not going unless you book Colin Oates headlining set. Um, uh, so, uh, that's cool, but all it's cool and all, but you all could have announced that the circle jerks are playing too. And I don't have to go to punk rock bowling. 
Uh, let's see. I'm trying to see if there's any others. Uh, come on. There's got to be some more. Oh, I like this one, though. Our kids under five suffer because my daughter is carrying on my emo legacy and she will faint when she hears the news. Uh, I saw something about like, oh, yeah, why aren't you put like, like, you know, why don't you put Guar, which they actually did last year. So there is basically some mixture. I've seen a lot of the older punk rock fans and the older Riot Fest fans kind of going against this one. And I absolutely love the move for them to pick, to pick uh, my chemical. Yeah. Yeah. My chemical romance for this one and why I like it. I think the one person who said the uh, comment of like, Oh, why they pick, like put this band's headline set. And they said, you know, most of those fans that grew up with them are now older and have the disposable income to really work with it. I really do think that's a great move and a great reason behind it. Because again, when people like when my chemical romance was very popular, so this is like, you know, like, like, you know, like the late two thousands, I was in middle school and just starting high school at that time. So, and then when My Chemical Romance disbanded, I was at the tail end of my high school, being in high school. So again, like I'm like 17 years old, I'm like 16, 17, oh, 16 years old when they uh, stopped. Now, all of a sudden they're coming back. I'm 25. So I've gone through high school. I've gone through college. I've got more disposable income. And there are many people out there that are even old, like older than I am that, uh, like I'm talking about like, you know, like late twenties, early thirties that really connected well with the band, even keep people younger than me connected well with the band. But now, cause we're all in the working world, we have that disposable income to go with. So it's a very smart move by Riot Fest to bring my chemical romance in because those three day passes are selling like crazy because people just want to make sure they're there Saturday to see my chemical romance perform live. And the nostalgia will be at an all-time high. Again, right, like the Ride Fest, they're always there for nostalgia as well because punk rock is not as prominent as it once was. But the energy is going to be absolutely insane. The energy was high last year. And they, like the headliner for the whole entire thing for Saturday was Slayer. And it was one of Slayer's, it was one of Slayer's last shows ever. It was their last show ever for Chicago. And it's like, well, now my chemical romance come back. This is like the perfect move for it. And it's just going to be all around fun. Now, I do want to get the three-day pass for this. I really, really do. But I'm not sure if I should. And I tech, I sent a message to one of our friends. And I just wanted to see if he knew anything about this. Because sometimes he's, he's connected with some of this stuff. Because you guys know me. You guys know I want to see Rise Against all the time. If I could if I could see them like, you know, like five, six times a year for a show, I would. Just because I love their shows. I love the music. I love everything about it. And I haven't seen anything from them. like touring this year. I'm like, well, it's Riot Fest at Chicago. It's punk rock. Like, this is perfect. Like, they'd be the perfect opener for My Chemical Romance because people are still going to go batshit crazy for it. So I had a, I had a message to my buddy. I'm like, hey, friend. Uh, you know, kind of try to get this friendly conversation. I'm like, hey, I got to ask you a question. Do you know if, and then if not if, when Rise Against is playing at or if, if it's going to be the case, then when Rise Against is going to be playing at Riot Fest. And my reason for asking is because I want to know if I should buy the three-day pass now or wait for a single-day pass because I do have stuff going on that weekend, and I I won't be mad if I miss it. But the thing is, is like if all of a sudden I buy the three-day pass and I'm only going on it Saturday, then who's going to want to buy Friday and Sunday? Um, if Rise Against is going to be there Friday or Sunday, then it's like, yeah, I want the three-day pass because I'll go down both days. I, I, I will do it. Because I want to see both bands. That's just the way it is. And if it's going to be there, but they're both going to be on there on Saturday, then I'm just going to get the Saturday pass. It just makes sense. So it's it's not anything about like, oh, I just want to, I just want to get an inside scoop on it. And like, no, I, well, I, I want the inside scoop on it so that I can actually make my smart purchasing decision on Riot Fest. Because I do want to go again. I love Riot Fest. Plus, I'll be going to Europe like the week after that. So it's like, oh my God, I'm going to be spending money. I got to save money for like the next like six months for this shit. Uh, but the reason why it's like a lot of those concert stuff and it's like why I'm trying to go to so many is just because I'm looking at my list now and it's like there are so many that are coming up over the next like two, two and a half months. I'm going to a lot of shows and I couldn't be happier. So taking a look at some of the shows I'm going to, I'm going to see Alter Bridge. I already talked about the team and Clint Lowry opening. I get to go see the week after that falling in reverse the word live and escape the fate. In March, I get to potentially go see Black Label Society. I get to see Bad Omens. I get to see Kingdom Collapse. I get to surprise the girls at GFM and see them play live. I get to see We Came as Romans. I get to see The Double Wars Pride. I get to see Black Label Brides. I get to see In This Moment. And then looking in May, I get to see... I'm not going to go see Theory of Demand in 10 years. I get to go see Volbeat. I'm probably going to go see Ginger. I have to sell my ticket for Sleeping with Sirens, unfortunately. And then I just bought uh, State Fair tickets for State Fair in Wisconsin because Skill is playing opening night. And, and Jen Ledger's side project is the opener. 
I thought, yeah, I want to do that because I like their shit. And well, I just love concerts. And why this makes me happier than all hell that I'm going back to concerts again and why I'm going to be doing all this stuff is because of what it does for me. And I'm not going to lie, guys. I have been feeling rather lonely lately. And the reason behind that is, it's like, it's twofold. So I'm going to go look at like, you know, kind of like with me and like with my friends, it's, it's becoming harder and harder to hang out with my friends over time. And most of that is due because of life. You know, we're not all like in college anymore where it's like, you know, you're not, we're not all around each other all the time and life is going on. You know, I'm 25 years old. Most of my friends are in their mid twenties. If a lot of my guy friends, they now have girlfriends a lot of my a lot of my female friends they have boyfriends and now like i was talking to my best friend today and we're starting to see a slew of more uh engagements popping up not nest not weddings yet but like we're talking like this is gonna be the year of the engagement because we've seen like four or five pop up already i have to say this though one of my good friends back uh he's i've known this kid since i was three him and his girlfriend have been dating for 10 years like they started dating when they were freshmen in high school and they have not stopped since and just this past week he finally proposed her and everyone, and I'll put it this way. You know that everyone is rooting for you. Everyone loves you and your uh, significant other and is rooting for you in your relationship when you propose. And the whole entire comment thread is finally. So I like to look to that. It's like, it's just, I mean, there's, they, I still get to hang out with them a good amount, but it's like, oh, there's a much larger swath of people who are not being able to hang out with as much because again, uh, different love interests and different spending time with them again, but I still totally get it more demanding work schedules from all of us too. It's not like college where, you know, we have these, all this free time or it's not like starting out. It's like, okay, you know, we don't have all these responsibilities. We're getting more responsibilities. We're doing more things. You know, some people, you know, potentially are getting married. Some people are having kids and it's just like, there is just more demanding on it overall. Uh, tighter money for all of us, you know, not most of us are no longer living with mommy and daddy since we got out of college of course you know you get out of college like myself i was did not have like any money after college because again i i when i got out i had all my student debts paid off like i had no student debts like i paid off everything i came back with like two three hundred bucks that was it Uh, in my bank account i had nothing and now a lot of us like a lot of people like you know maybe they had student loans but they were in the same kind of boat was like they came back they didn't have a place to live so they live with mom and dad And now after, you know, being out of college for about three years, you take a look at a lot of my friends and a lot of the people that I associate with. So many of us are outside of mommy and daddy's home. Like we're living on our own. We're doing our own thing. So there's bills to be paid. There's stuff to do uh, there. And it's just, it's harder to, you know, get together and do some of these like crazy spontaneous things simply because money's tighter. That's just the way it is. And distance as well. Cause I've, you know, friends are moving out more towards the suburbs one of my best friends lives about 30, 35 minutes away from me. And he, even though he lived with his fiance, who I act, actually really like, uh, it's it's just kind of hard to just go out there all the time, even though like they're always, you know, oh, you guys want to come out, come out. Yeah, it's perfect. But, you know, sometimes you just like, oh, I just, I'm just tired. So you don't want to drive 35 minutes there. And all of a sudden, you know, it's 1230, one in the morning and you don't want to drive back. That just happens. And then also I haven't been making the time for my friends myself as well, because Every day during the week, like got a full time job for over eight hours. I go to the gym and then after work afterwards, like I come back home, I eat and I work on this stuff. That is my stuff. So again, this nice song day project, the corporate Grudge podcast, all of it, it's become so much more demanding of, of what I need to do here that like it cuts in my time to uh, hang out with friends. And it, basically it's like, I can't have any spontaneity with it. I need things planned out, you know, more than like a day in, like, like a day in advance. It's not like something like all of a sudden, like say I'm shooting the podcast right now. I need to get it out. And all of a sudden one of my friends texts me and says, Hey, we're going to play pond hockey. Can you come now? I really got to figure out like, can I make this work or am I going to have to sit home because I still got to work on this stuff again. I will say this though. It's not, it's not something like this. I love doing this stuff. But it's just kind of, you know, like I was saying, like why I'm feeling a little bit lonely because the spontaneity of being able to hang out with friends is now gone or not there as much. But when I get to plan concerts, when I get to go to these shows, I feel at home at these shows like none other. I mean, like when I was a kid, I was always talking about how like I had my home and then I had my second home. My second home, I always said was Miller park and here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where the Milwaukee Brewers play. Cause I always went to baseball games. And when I always go to those baseball games, it was like for three, three and a half hours, I'm sitting there watching baseball and the rest of the world doesn't matter. It's like when I'm in the gym, it's like nothing else matters except the task at hand. 
but that's a little bit different than going to like, you know, a ball game. See, when I was going to a ball game, it's like nothing matters but what I'm watching and just being able to relax. With the gym, again, I'm able to like, – both those places I'm able to clear my mind, but the gym, there's a task at hand when I was watching baseball games. Oh, did I just miss up something? Oh, no. Oh, my God. I almost did. Oh, that's scary. I hit my keyboard on accident. I'm just like, oh, my God, did I stop the podcast again? But it looks like I didn't. I should be good. But what I was talking about like with ball games, it's just – I'm able to just sit there, turn off my mind, and just enjoy and just relax and just let myself go. And when it comes – now I don't say that about Miller Park. I say that about concerts because for those times when I walk into the – when I walk in uh, through the gate, when I walk through the door, life's problem goes away. And all that matters is me and a bunch of other crazy rock and metal fans being able to just let go, let loose, and go crazy for a couple of hours. And – it gets something where I'll leave, I'll come in a show sometimes you know jacked up I'll come in a show sometimes you know just a little bit downtrodden uh, sometimes I come in a show even depressed but when I always leave I always feel awake and alive and yeah I just made a skillet reference for you guys oh yes he did and I it's something that I just enjoy doing plus you know when it comes to the mosh pits I love to go and jump those mosh pits like a madman and it's kind of weird just because I enjoy. You know, just running. Into pe- I enjoy hitting people in the mosh pit because, you know, if you didn't enjoy hitting people or getting hit by people, then you wouldn't go into the pit at all. I enjoy hitting people because it's like it's a com- it's it's a weird like organized chaos community where kind of like Fight Club in a way, to where it's like you know you're jumping in, you're able to hit these people, and it's they, you're able to hit them, they're able to hit you, but there's never gonna be any like it's it's nothing personal. It's just you know you guys are having a good time, having fun at the show, and it's just fun. I just really like it. Plus, I'm a little weird, too, because I do enjoy kind of getting hit and knocked down the pit as well, because it honestly makes me feel a lot more human and and honestly more centered. Like, I have to improve my life and strive for greatness because, yeah, maybe I got knocked down on the pit. Maybe I got to do better. But the thing is, it's kind of like it just it centers me more. That's the best way to put it. I just feel centered, more human, more humbled by it. And I always leave the pit with a smile on my face. Yes, even after that motionless and white show where blood running was running down my face or my God. I was still smiling that one. Even like this, I'm like, ah, just get me out of here. Get me out of here. I'm like, I'm still enjoying this shit because that energy was nuts. I mean, that energy was still nuts. I wish I would have jumped back in. But of course, you know, I had like that shirt tied around my head. So I looked like a pirate Arr, just so, so the blood wouldn't stop, uh, keep flowing. Oh, man, that was a fun day. But like, I just love going to shows because it's just I just feel more like myself after those shows. And. I'm at like the peak confidence in life when I'm at those shows. And because that when I'm at those shows, when I'm listening to music, when I'm jamming out with everyone, that's my place. That's my time. That, it, it, I don't have to worry about what anyone else is doing. I don't have to worry about, uh, especially if I'm by myself, which I have come to absolutely love. I don't have to babysit anybody. If I want to jump in the mosh pit, and same with a group of people, if I want to jump in the mosh pit, I'm going to go jump in the mosh pit. If I'm with a group of people, and someone's like, oh, don't go do that because then what happens if you get hurt? It's like, you, yeah, you're not my freaking mom. You're not my freaking girlfriend. Like, shut up. Just let me go do my thing. And it's just like nothing that's going to keep me down. Like, It's like if I want to go in there, I'm going to go in there. If I want to go crowd surfing, which I haven't done yet, but I will be doing for the Volbeat show because I actually have my friends there so they can actually hold my shit, but they really want to go see Volbeat. So I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be up. I'm going to be crowd surfing. It's going to be freaking fantastic nothing's able to keep me down i get to talk to so many people there sure i don't really talk to many of them right after like you know after the show is over but it's just like for that it's it's like for that one show doesn't matter who we are doesn't matter where the hell we came from doesn't matter what we believe doesn't matter wh- what way we vote in the last election all that matters is, is we're here to see insert band name here we're here to see Rise Against. We're here to see Disturbed. We're here to see Ice Nine Kills. We're here to see Skillet. We're here to see August Burns Red. We're here to see Alter Bridge. We're here to see Falling in Reverse. We're here to see New Year's Day. Hell, we're here to see All That Remains. We're here to see Lacuna Coil. We're here to see In This Moment. We're here to see uh, 30 Seconds to Mars. It doesn't matter. All that matters is, again, everyone is there talking to everybody and making friends with everybody because... All that matters to us in that moment is the music and how we connect with it. And it doesn't matter, again, how you're connecting with it versus how I'm connecting with it. All that matters is, is the fact that we're connecting with it and it's bringing us happiness. And that's, what bringing us, that's what's bringing us at, that, at those shows. And when we're there at those shows, it's, it's just like a blissful time. 
It's beautiful. And I, I really miss that beauty in life a lot. So that's, I mean, I love going to shows. Plus, you know, especially those good and great. It doesn't matter if the show is good or great. If the show is bad, it's kind of like, uh. But if the show is like, oh, it's okay. Or if it's good or if it's just fantastic. I always leave with the renewed energy of life. Like, I mean, I want to come back here. I want to start working on this stuff. Of course, like on shows on Saturday, I'll go to bed. I'll wake up in the morning. I'll go swimming in, in, at the gym, come back here, and then get back to work. And I'm like, I'm still got that renewed sense of life. I mean, hell. I've gotten beaten up in some of those pits before. And I show up at the gym the next day. And everyone's like, what happened to you? I'm like, mosh pit. You okay? Yep. Why are you here working out? I'm like, because I feel alive. Yeah, I really do feel I, I I can't get enough of a mosh pit, guys. I just can't get enough of it. It is one of the best things possible out there. And, man, I just love concerts. I... I, I think in the end, when I'm looking at concerts and why I love going to live shows so much is, I mean, the last one I went to was that skillet show after the Admirals game. And yes, I didn't get to mosh, but I got snuck on the ice, but it just, I, it just gave me a renewed sense of life and reminded myself of who I was. And that's not just skill. When I go and see Alter Bridge, um, it's going to be the same way. When I get to go absolutely crazy mosh and hopefully do the wall of death for popular monster, I have falling in reverse. It's going to be the same way. When I get to go see bad omens in a perform in a bar, it's going to be the same way. When I get to see black veil brats the first time, it's going to be the same way. When I get to go over to, to, to Europe to go see shows with a couple of people in September, it's going to feel the same way. So, I mean, again, not the same, way, but the end result's going to feel the same way. I'm going to, I'm going to feel so much better about who I am as myself. And I'm gonna have this renewed sense of life. Like the confidence in myself is gonna be at an is always at an all time high once these shows are going. You cannot beat me at those. It is, it's, it's truly a beautiful thing, guys. And that's why I love to go to concerts so much because it's, it's the best. So, the more shows I can go to, the better. And maybe I'll go see if I can try. Well, because I'm still trying to go see a couple that I haven't you know know about, but I want to see if I can go get them. Specifically that Five Finger Death Punch one because I want to go see Ice Non Kills again. And actually, a little tidbit for everyone that made it to the end of the episode. Uh, just wait until like next week's couple episodes because I have gotten a couple of different, uh, like what's the word? I've gotten a couple of different takes from people regarding some of the shirts that I wear. Like, oh, you're wearing cool shirts. Like, let's keep talking about them. Why are you wearing so many cool shirts? But where'd you get them? Like, I just get a lot of these shirts. Like, I just... I find them with the bands and they, I like their shirts. So I order them. Got a couple of real cool ones coming up for you guys this week. And well, I'm not going to lie. They're all thanks to ice nine kills. So on that note, my friends, I'm going to call it a day because well, we've gone for about an hour and well, my voice is sore and I've got through everything I want to get through. So Come back with us again next week. Absolutely love having you listening to the Core Progression Podcast brought to you by my song today, Rock 2000 Day. As always, keep on rocking. And you guys know how I always end these. This is Kevin from the Core Progression Podcast brought to you by my song today, Rock 2000 Day. I'm going to end it with the classic. See you.